right, guys, we are back uh, after a, a long time. Obviously, we've had some training in between, uh, but we're going to get back on some subject matters and some discussions to have uh, on the channel. Uh, today, we're going to uh, talk about something that's uh, that needs to be talked about. Uh, it should be discussed. Um, it's something that comes from personal experience, comes from um, years of being in the industry, uh, seeing where the industry has gone from point A to point B to point C and so forth. And that is coaching. Uh, coaching is something that hasn't been around forever, believe it or not. As much as we see it now every day on Instagram and it looks like every person is qualified to teach. Um, realistically, it was never that way in the beginning. Uh, and I'm not tarnishing coaching. I'm not gonna say it's a bad thing. I'm just gonna say a few things today that might help you understand who might be able to coach you to the best of their abilities and how you're gonna be in a safe environment when being coached. So with that being said, we obviously need to uh, look into certain uh, subtopics within the coaching itself. Um, obviously quality of service that comes from what can the person provide you in terms of the intellectual properties, uh, how much experience they have, how many results have they seen in the past, um, how applicable it is to your own life and uh, you know lifestyle. Because many coaches will be able to send you, you know, a piece of paper with the ideal plan on, but then you have to take into account your lifestyle, your time frames, um, your costs of living. So many things that have to be like kind of thought about before you even say yes to someone. Um, because you can sign up with someone and it cannot be the perfect fit, believe me. It's happened a few times in not only my career, but with many friends of mine. Um, I've walked into certain avenues of coaches that have been highlighted to me as great coaches by other people and they certainly are great coaches for those those individuals but then when it comes to perhaps myself the the shoe doesn't quite fit so you know as much as someone can say to you through word of mouth this is the coach for you there's going to be a certain amount of experience and time spent with that coach you're going to have to spend in order to know if they are the right coach for you um, i've done multiple preps with multiple people over the years and you know, after a period of time, you soon learn whether the person is someone that you can work with or not. Um, that's gonna come down to not just personality, but like I say, all those aspects we've just discussed, um, how flexible, and when I say flexible, I don't mean how giving, how much they bend around you, but how much can what they give to you actually fit your current setup and lifestyle. Um, to name a few coaches that are very flexible and have an understanding of such things are coaches such as Patrick who, has an array of clients who you know work different shifts, uh, different uh, somatotypes, different genetics, different cultural backgrounds, and all have very varied approaches into their preps, but yet all yield excellent results due to the process of his coaching. Um, this isn't me just advertising Patrick by any means, because I've had coaches before that have actually been fantastic. You can name a few, you know, Jordan Peters, uh, Chris Aceto, Phil Viz. Each and every one of them has provided something to me that has allowed me to take a step forward from the previous uh, look that I've had, um, step up my training in one manner or the other. Right, so that's me blabbering on. That's a lot about that. Let's get into some actual talk about how to look for the right person for you and what's gonna suit you. So um, cost, first and foremost, you have to look into the expenses of a coach. A lot of people don't consider um, the financial ties that come with being coached because at the end of the day, you know, you should consciously in yourself understand that this is their job. So from their perspective, they will probably need a certain amount of time out of you. And rightly so. A coach should always suggest that we do a certain amount of time because otherwise it's not worth their time. So don't be shocked if a coach says to you, yeah, we do a three month as a minimum package because that, in my opinion, is only fair because it means they're gonna get what's worth uh, their time because they're gonna spend a lot of time initially putting a plan together. You gotta understand that like the first thing you do as a coach, and I've got this from my own experience, is you formulate a, a, a huge plan and you put it out there for the person to begin. That's time in itself, that's effort in itself. As we know, plans don't cause change immediately. It takes some time. So you need to show that you can adhere to a process. Um, I think a three month period of, of working with someone is enough time to know whether they're telling you is good or cod's wallop. Um, if it is the latter, then you have every right in yourself to say, you know what? Let's call it a day, this coaching isn't working for me. Um, but I do definitely think that you should give people enough time in order to see if what they're doing is helping because they're learning you as much as you're learning them. Uh, remember that you walk into a new coach, he knows as much about you as you know about him, if, if anything less. 
there's only one of that coach, but there's many, many clients. So from your eyes, he will not have the same understanding of you as you perhaps have of his process. Um, so you have to take that into account also. Um, it's like anybody that walked into coaching with Jordan Peters, they're gonna have a slight understanding of his approach, but then they can't expect him to know their body off the bat because he's had, just because he's had so many clients. That's not the case. Everyone is very, very different. Uh, principles may apply. There will be a certain approach that coaches have and they will um, proceed following those, those principles, but they are always gonna be manipulated in order to suit the individual. And that is something that's gonna take time and feedback in order to see uh, what to do from there. Um, so the cost is definitely one thing you need to take into account. You will notice that there's a lot of coaches out there that probably, I wouldn't say underselling themselves, but if, they're, if their coaching is really, really cheap, then you can't expect the best service. Um, there is a quality that comes with coaching. It is a, a very uh, delicate matter when it comes to really helping someone improve their physique and their nutrition and their training and their performance. It isn't something to be mocked. It shouldn't be uh, very blasé and just a few WhatsApps a week. It should be very structured, precise. Um, it should have some integrity behind it. And integrity does cost the price. It will cost the price. And if you get a premium coach, you're going to be paying a few hundred pounds a month. Um, and that is what it is. The uh, other thing I want to say as well is that you need to understand that with coaches themselves, that you are one of many clients. So there is a certain amount of patience that is required. Um, I've seen it in the past where certain individuals throw a bit of a hissy fit when they feel like certain um, clients are getting more attention than others. Obviously, if it's very, very apparent and if that's the case, then that's a fair, fair argument. But most of the time, uh, the coach is spreading himself very, very evenly between everybody and anybody. Uh, and no one really gets priority. It's just a case of following order. So-and-so's emailed me this morning, so-and-so gets a reply. So-and-so emails me after, they get a reply. It'll run in their order. There's not a lot of favoritism from good coaches. So, again, what I'm saying here is like, there's a difference between phony coaches and good coaches. I'm only talking from a good coach's perspective, what you're gonna get out of them and how they're worth their money. Um, there's the, the red flags, like I say, are the things that are gonna allow you to know when a coach isn't uh, a credible one. So if you do email someone, um, let's say on a Saturday, in my opinion, they should get back to you in 24 hours. This is just a straight guideline. If they can't get back to you in 24 hours, unless some sort of emergencies happen, then I don't think that they're paying as much attention to their clients as they should. Um, because what will happen then is that a backlog of emails will occur or contact will occur because if you can't answer it within a 24 hour period how many people have then tried to get in touch over the next 24 hours and so forth um, a good coach will be organized orderly and it will respond in he will or she will respond in, in good time um, also from a perspective of a client that shows that there is interest there obviously if you're not getting responses as quick as you like um, within a certain degree of you know respect then you have to understand that they might not quite take this as seriously as you. And then that could be another indication of a coach not being as quality as you hoped. Um, again, experience as well. Now, one something I want to say is there's two sides to this. There's a lot of people that say that someone doesn't have to have been for it to be a good coach. And as much as I do agree, I still think that valuable experience from the individual is going to add to their credentials as a coach. Because there's things that you can't explain to someone unless they've been through the process of extreme dieting themselves and getting ready for a show themselves, um, that can't be taught unless you have done it. Things like nerves on show day, nerves the night before, uh, silly little things like uh, tan, you know, like what's your, point, what's your opinion on this, opinion on that. If you haven't put the tan on, smelt the tan, lived the life, been there, done the pump up backstage, then truly like you are, you can be a great coach and you can get someone ready for a show, but an excellent coach is gonna be able to help with those finer details at the end. Uh, we ran through this last year when we did the, um, the Spanish show. You know, we were on the phone to the very last minute with my, my coach and running through all the small details. And because my coach has been an IFB professional bodybuilder and been there, like there's no confusion in how I feel. It's all understandable. The pressures, uh, the drive, the determination, the enjoyment, the sadness, whatever emotion it may be, and um, whatever feeling it may be, the, you can guarantee that they've been through the same and their understanding is gonna be the most understandable opinion that you can have. Um, if someone hasn't been through it and is, is harsh and dictating, then I don't really feel like they have a right to be harsh and dictating because I feel like 
they don't understand how you feel. Another thing I will, I, I'm not trying to mock, but you have to take into account as well how long have they been coaching. Um, I don't think there's anything wrong with working with new coaches. I think that's how new coaches become great, but I certainly wouldn't be paying them money or paying them a lot of money at least uh, in the initial phases of their coaching. I would rather like, if I was a new coach, I'd rather say, look, I've got five people I want to help, um, probably cost free. I wouldn't do it for any money and I just want to prove myself and then they would be my, uh, that'd be my portfolio for them going forward. I'd get five transformations out of them. Um, I'd represent those on all of my, you know, future clients and uh, then they can take it from there. If someone's literally just one day decided to coach, literally it's Monday, they don't coach, Tuesday they coach and they're trying to ask you for 300 pound a month. That's questionable in my opinion. Uh, and I wouldn't pursue that avenue. Um, contact, frequent contact outside of emails. A, a good coach in my, again, this is all based on my opinion, um, will, if, there's, there may be a difference between professional bodybuilding and being an amateur. Um, and this is honestly just because there's more riding on it if you're a professional. There's money at stake for the individual. So prize money, you know, sponsors, stuff like that. That puts pressure on the coach as well. So if the coach does have, say, a WhatsApp number of a professional athlete, but not you, and he only has your email, and you're not professional, I wouldn't stress, because if the day comes where you do prefer to turn professional, or you are doing this for money, and there is a lot more at stake when it comes to the financial side, they will be giving you that as well. Um, that's, that's something that will come. Um, it's just you have to understand that, like with all things, depending on what is at stake will determine the actions taken. Um, I, I could be like literally about to go on stage and have a breakdown and it could be the difference between me winning $10,000 and nothing. And those last words from a coach, whether they're positive or whatnot, could be the difference between those two things occurring. Um, they obviously want to get paid. Uh, it helps if you win some money because then you can pay them and it also helps their credentials if you do well. So um, that's definitely something to take into account. So all people though, who have a coach, one thing you do need to do is, like I kind of mentioned previously, is at least for a time, just listen. Listen and follow the plan. See how things fold, you know, over the first two to three months, then make decisions from there. I would encourage anyone to give the coach time to settle in with the individual and to prove themselves. Um, I think it's rash when people jump into a new nutrition plan and like five days have gone by and they're hungry and they're like, this is all wrong, I'm, I'm leaving. I'm calling it a day, I'm done. I don't like how I'm feeling. Um, you're better off telling the coach how you're feeling and you're better off being very transparent with the emotions and things that you're going through, whatever it may be, whether it may be to do with diet or home life. Because remember, a coach sometimes actually wants to know other aspects that may be interfering with your potential. Because I've had it with Patrick, like if I'm having a day where, um, you know, things are on my mind, perhaps to like, you know, uh, whether it be my mother or someone. A coach is there to understand that, a good coach. A good coach will be like, you know what, Jay, I understand that you're going through this and that. Uh, I'm not gonna ease off the gas on you. I'm not gonna be like, don't try hard, don't train hard. But there will be a certain level of understanding there and whether they um, give you, I don't know, whether it be a rest day or just a moment to yourself. Sometimes that's just as beneficial as pushing the client forward, forward, forward. Um, a certain level of human understanding, I suppose, is the, the title of this part uh, that is necessary from the individual. There's a lot of robot coaches out there that are very, very good. Um, but for me personally, would be too insensitive to work with um, because I do feel that there has to be a very human side to coaching as well. And there has to be an understanding side. I don't mean you let your clients off for everything, they mis you know, every mistake they make. But I just mean um, a human level of understanding that if things are starting to be hard for someone uh, for a reason that's pretty valid that the coach can kind of have a step back and understand how and why and um, or maybe adjust the plan going forward in order to suit that happening um, yeah another thing with coaches that i want to suggest as well is you have to look at something that i did is i looked at who's the coach's previous clients um, and who kind of resembled me most um, obviously i'm a white caucasian guy who's medium build so I look for a coach who's done wonders with a person of similar genetics. It's as similar as that. So I, I look for a coach who's got a, a, a list of athletes or you know bodybuilders, whatever you may want to call them, that have come from perhaps a similar background to me and been able to excel. Um, because then I know 
to a certain level that this person knows how he's handling this certain tool. Um, you know, I, I'd encourage anyone to do that, whether you're, you know, Chinese, black, white, I don't give a toss. Wherever you are, research into your coach, see who they've done wonders with. And if something fits, fits the bill, then it's very, very likely, in my opinion, it's gonna fit the bill again. Um, because a lot of us genetically do have similarities and a lot of what causes one person's progression will cause another person's aggression if it's a genetic like, trait. Um, you know, I work with Patrick, obviously, and Ian works with Patrick. Joe works with Patrick. Um, and I know that a lot of clients that jumped on after me have similar genetic makeup to me. You'll notice there's a lot of guys from the UK that are, you know, middle, like 20s, 30s, white, uh, six foot, kind of the same build as me. Uh, so therefore they probably think, you know, potentially this is what we can do. And that's a totally understandable thing to think. Um, you know, I wouldn't say that's stupid and I wouldn't say that's silly. I think that's, uh, I think that's actually quite sensible because it's evidence-based to a certain extent. Um, any coach that I've worked with, to be fair, I've kind of looked into their backlog of clients. Um, you know, if I, looked at a, if I looked at a coach and they've, they've prepped Dexter Jackson for years, I'm probably gonna think to myself, that might not be the right coach for me because we're completely different. Um, that's just how my head works. Whereas if I look at a coach who's prepped Branch Warren, then I'd be like, maybe the person that's managed to do wonders with him might have more of a chance with me. Um, ironically speaking though, on that matter, there is the odd occasion where that doesn't matter because those two actual individuals right there were both coached by George Farah, who managed to do wonders with both. Um, but then their similarities were height, weight, uh, you know, structure. So there's different things you have to look into. Um, yeah. So I could ramble on. I can ramble on forever because there's a lot of things. One, one last one from me. Yeah, yeah, go on. When do you know that you're at the point when you need a coach? For me, like, I'll be just blunt. I wanted a coach when I thought that it's time to level up. So I reached a certain level in my bodybuilding that was good. I was a champion bodybuilder. But then there was a level from champion bodybuilder to like, how do I turn professional? Um, and I thought that was an external, I needed external information. I didn't really need external motivation, but I needed external information in order to go forward. It felt like it was very much science based. It was more to do with what do I not know about bodybuilding that I need to know to go forward? You know, so it was very much about the information that someone provide. Um, if you, you should expect from a coach that they are going to be able to level up, that they can take you from where you are to somewhere else, because why would you pay your good money? to work with someone who can't take you to another level. Like that is the bottom line. It would be a waste of your money, my money, if you work to the coach and your progression is this. You, you want to progress like this. A lot of that will come from this also though, I'll add. If you can build a good relationship with that coach, then there's going to be a certain amount of uh, reward that's going to be internal from knowing that they're proud of your efforts. So I would encourage you to work with a coach you have a good relationship with, who you want to do proud who you want to show them your hard work, who you want to show them that you can progress. And if anything, progress more than they even expected. So take what they give you, run with it, and do them more proud than you would do yourself. It's been very easy for me as a man to kind of link up with coaches because uh, from a personal experience, I find a mentor a very important thing to have in life. Uh, I think they're very valuable. I didn't have a mentor as a child, so I felt that a mentor in, in coaching was almost filling a gap. Uh, bodybuilding is my life. It's what I've been doing for a long time. So it's just, it's just, it might as well be the same as being a, a father to a certain extent. Uh, I had friends that helped me who are older who are in their fifties now when I was a junior. Uh, and I looked at them in very much the same light. I had a lot of passion, a lot of love, a lot of respect for them. And I still do. Um, and when I have that feelings towards a coach, it's so much easier to work hard and want to do well. Uh, and I think you would notice that well. If you don't respect your coach, if you don't really care about them, you're not going to make the same progress that you could, whereas if you did care about them. So that's what I would say to that. Definitely. Cool. So, so really, guys, it's, uh, you know, these, these videos are just about personal feelings of what's been going through my mind for maybe the last five, six days. Uh, I was just thinking over the last few days about coaching because, you know, when I stream on Twitch or I talk on Instagram, I often get asked to coach, um, which always raises the question to me, what, why don't I coach? I can be honest with you guys, I don't coach because I don't want to be telling people what to do and take. Uh, I don't feel qualified. Um, but, you know, if you are confident in, in your own knowledge and your own information that you can pass off, then, then feel free to coach. It's just for me, I know there's wiser men out there, such as Patrick, that I'd rather just listen to. And who knows, eventually down the line, I might absorb enough knowledge and information that I can one day do the same. 
Um, but you know, for now, that's not the way I want to go. I'm going to focus all of my efforts on to the actual competing side. And um, yeah, I'll leave the coaching to the good coaches. So like I say, guys, like if you've got any questions about this, this video topic, there's a lot of things we've missed because to think of them all off the mark, questions that could like literally extend this video, you can lay them below. Um, and then I can obviously explain my opinion of that. Um, if my opinion is something that you find value in, of course. So uh, yeah, I appreciate it. Uh, uh, thankful for your time, your efforts, and just basically hanging around on the channel and just being part of the community. So subscribe, like, share, all that stuff, all that jazz, and uh, stay tuned and we'll be doing more. Thanks again, guys.